I start off um, cutting fabric that is seven and a half inches wide and eight and a quarter inches long. Then with a piece of coordinating fabric, um, this will be the inside of the mask. It is cut seven and a half by seven and a quarter. And then what I do is I take um, the remaining piece and I actually use this handy cutting tool that happens to be four and a half inches long and I just cut a strip. When I order my fabric, I order it in quarter inch, or sorry, a quarter of a yard cuts because it makes it really easy um, and you're not wasting a lot of fabric, I'm finding. So then I um, take that long strip and I cut it into two and a half by about four and a half inches long. Those are your side bindings. Okay, so then I iron out my pieces and I pin them and I've gotten a little bit good at eyeing this um, at one and a half inches from either side. I actually like my little um, ironing board cover here because it shows me about, this is up close to what I need it to be on one of these little lines. So um, I'm not super careful about that, but I do pin those together. Then I work on my side bindings Meg, are you getting this in here? Yeah. So I fold them in half and then you fold, open up and then fold to the center. These will be used to um, hold and encase the um, elastic when you're done. And then you just iron with a nice hot iron and you have your side binding. And I'll show you how we use that here at the end. So in this next step, you are going to stitch a quarter inch seam allowance to your pin and reverse your stitch. You want this to be pretty sturdy here. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then we will open things up and iron out that um, seam. Okay, so you have pressed open your seam and what you've actually done is created the opening for the filter pocket as well as the pipe cleaner. So now what you're going to do is you're going to turn this over and you're going to put it through the machine and I use um, a 1 8 seam allowance here. So I typically sew on my machine on this number five stitch um, but for this top stitching part, I move it to the far right position for the number six stitch. So you can see that my needle has kind of like scooted over. If you don't have that on your machine, you can just simply do a one eighth inch um, seam allowance on this. So you're going to stitch all the way down um, each side of your fabric. Okay, so you can see I have just stitched right up there, a nice top stitch. Then you're gonna fold back together your right sides and you are going to make a, oops, one quarter inch seam across the bottom. Okay, so I am ironing open this seam here and you could probably skip this step, but it really does um, make the mask more comfortable when you have ironed that open and then I turn it right side out and I'll show you how to um, pin and go forward with the next few steps. Okay, so I like to iron this um, now that it's right side out and then you'll see you've got your filter pocket here and the next bit of stitching we'll do will actually create the pocket for your pipe cleaner so that you can take it in and out. Um, it's nice to be able to remove those when you're washing. It does add to the life of your mask. All right, so I've ironed everything out and you'll notice I've placed two pins. I am going to sew, um, I just use the edge of my presser foot here. It's between a quarter and, um, and three eighths of an inch. So I just use the side of my presser foot when I sew, but you'll sew to the edge. Make sure you reverse this. You want it to be pretty strong because it'll be your pipe cleaner holder. Then I lift up and come over here. I do reverse my stitch and then I continue straight across. And that then creates the um, pocket for your pipe cleaner to go in and out. And then you're gonna do a 1 8 inch um, stitch 
along the bottom here, which also is not required, but when you wash your mask a lot, it does allow it to hold its shape um, with multiple washings. So it just gives it a little bit extra, um, I don't know, support and sturdiness. Okay, so you can see that I have done the stitching along the top and then along the bottom. And now we are ready to pleat. And this is really hard to get a video of by myself. So I will do my best to hold it steady and pleat with one hand. So essentially, um, you are going to come down a little bit, um, like a, one and a quarter inches. I have this template and I can give it to you if you need it because I just eyeball everything now. But essentially, you're just going to, you. there's a couple of ways to do it. I pinch my pleats. Um, so I eyeball it, I pinch, and I pull it down. And of course, I can't do this one-handed with the video. So I'm just going to do the best that I can. And then you're going to put all of your pleats in. That is looking very crooked. Sorry, Holly. Um, but you're going to put all of your pleats in and iron um, with a really hot iron so that your pleats stay in place. That's really important, especially as you iron it. Um, the hotter your iron right now and the better you pleat this, um, the better it will be. And then I just pinch my next pleat and pull it down. And then I'll try to adjust it. Um, and then you would just pinch and pleat. And I have not spaced these very well since I am trying to make the video. But essentially, once I've pleated it, um, I will stop the video and I will show you what that looks like. And we'll show you where I pin it and where I pin the binding piece. Okay, so I have put my pleats in, ironed it really well. And you'll see over here, I have attached my binding um, right side facing up. And then I've opened it up a little bit here. And I have pinned it to each of the pleats. This will allow you to attach your binding and sew your pleats together in one step. This is one of my shortcuts um, that I have kind of developed over time. So I will do that to the other side and then I'll head over to the machine and I will stitch down um, using a half inch seam allowance. So when you stitch the side binding on at your half inch seam um, allowance, you only want to stitch to the end of the mask. Don't stitch all the way through the binding. And then you will do the same thing to the other side and we'll be ready for the last steps. Okay, so in the very last steps, you'll want to prep your elastic. You'll need to decide if you're doing around the ears or behind the head. I love behind the head, the two straps behind the head for different groups of people. So people that are working with their hands a lot and do not want to fuss with the ear loops all day long, this is a really great option. Um, teachers, anybody that's using their hands a lot, um, kids that are going to be playing a sport and need to wear a mask, basically they'll put this on and it will pretty much stay put. But you want to work with the length of elastic that's going to work best for you. So I wear a 26 inch length cut of elastic and then I sew it together um, just about, I don't know, what is that, about a half an inch or so um, together. So you lose about an inch um, length. So for this particular one, because I don't know the sizing of the person, I cut it to 28. Most men I cut to 30. Um, the largest I have cut for a man was 33 and that person wears like a 2XL um, in, in their shirts, in their tops. So um, just to give you some sizing reference on how much to cut for that elastic. Um, most females are going to be fine with a 26, 27. I would recommend for most average sized guys, 30, 31, somewhere in there um, would be an appropriate size. All right, so this last step, I unfortunately don't think I can record. So what I'll do is I'll put it together and then come back and show and kind of explain how I put things together. It's time to put the elastic inside the side binding. So you'll notice I fold in that end and put the sewn elastic towards one end and I pin that with a red pin. I do the same thing folding and pinning the elastic into place as close to that edge as I can. And I do that to each corner and we are ready to sew. All right, so everything is all pinned up and we are at the machine. You'll notice I've placed the edge of the binding at my one half inch 
and you'll notice I have one red pin here, the rest of them are green. The reason why I do that is we have found that where you have sewn the elastic together, it can slip through the binding and that's really irritating on your head or get stuck in your hair. So what I do is I stitch down straight stitch and make sure you reverse at the top and the bottom to really lock in those stitches. But when I get down to this red pin, I um, rotate my fabric and I come through with a straight stitch across my elastic. Don't worry, you'll still be able to adjust so that the top um, fits around the top of your head and your neck really easily and then you just sew off the end. So um, I can't do that very well while making this video, but I am going to attempt it. All right, so here we go. Oh, I know what I won't be able to do. I might not be able to reverse. Nope, I can't reverse my stitches and keep it straight. All right, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. I'll try and show you what this looks like here at the end as we stitch down towards this. So I'm gonna stop a couple more stitches here. There we go. And I'm going to lift my presser foot and rotate my fabric. That way you don't ever have to take it off the needle. You're going to sew down the end, then reverse back to this line of stitching over here. And then I'm um, straight off the end. Okay, so here's what things look like at the end. Um, you have your stitching to kind of hold this piece of elastic in place. And what you can do is you can actually, once it's on your face, adjust using your right hand. If you aren't comfortable adjusting with your right hand because you're a lefty, you could always stitch it on the opposite side of your fabric. Um, looking at this mask, I stitch it on the right side because I'm right-handed. Um, but if you, let me think about that. So when you put it on, you would be adjusting with your right hand. So hopefully that makes sense. Then I've got my pipe cleaner. I forget how long I cut these, but I just kind of estimate um, how long I need. And then I do turn my ends so that they are not sharp and pointy. And what you will do, and I'll try to do this one handed here, is insert into that little seam that you've made there, that little pocket, all the way across until you can't go any further. And then um, you do kind of have to fold it in half and this is where you just kind of have to adjust it at the end, but you insert all the way, straighten, flatten that out. And then you've got your pipe cleaner in there. And then you do have your filter pocket here. So if you need to add an extra layer of fabric, you can just take a piece of cut out fabric and put in there. You can use a folded up shop towel, a coffee filter. Um, there's lots of ideas online, even vacuum cleaner bags you can put in there. Um, but with two layers of pretty good quilters cotton, you should be pretty safe um, and secure in keeping your um, breath <laughs> and sneezes and coughs to yourself and keep others uh, from you. So if you have questions, let me know 